All television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. It's human nature to choose a side in a conflict, but when both sides are against Christ, then obviously you're not to side with either. And when it comes to the conflict in Kenite occupied Israel between the Palestinians and the Israelis, so called by land association, are you supposed to wish any group Godspeed that abideth not in the doctrine of Christ? 2 John verse 10 says, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So are either one of these nations Christian nations? Do they bring the doctrine of Christ? No. One is predominantly Muslim and the other Talmudic Zionist, with a small number of Christians on either side. The true Christian nation be not a geographic location, but rather the many-membered body of Christ worldwide. If you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, and all are one in Christ Jesus. If a Christian were to convert to Islam, Judaism, or any other so-called religion other than Christianity, which isn't a religion but a reality, they would then die spiritually because Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father and the only name whereby men, women, or children of the age of accountability must be saved. So it's really that simple. You're either on one tree or the other. There are two family trees. The tree of life, which is God's family tree. If you're in Christ, then you're part of that family tree. The natural branches being of the original 12 tribes, so long as they're Christian. If they're not, then they're part of the other tree, which is Satan's family tree. Satan being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the natural branches of Satan's family tree are the Kenites. Those who believe not in the Lord Jesus Christ are automatically grafted onto Satan's family tree, and if a Christian were to reject Christ and join some other religion worshiping a false god, then they would be grafted onto that tree as well, being chopped off of the tree of life and grafted onto the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If a Kenite or anybody else were to convert to Christianity, they would then be grafted onto the tree of life, God's family tree, and this analogy is given in Romans chapter 11. For every positive, there's a negative. So should Christians support the so-called Israelis? No, they don't believe in Christ Jesus. Should Christians support the Palestinians? No, they don't believe in Christ Jesus either. They're part of Satan's family tree because they're not Christians. So don't even bid them Godspeed lest you become a partaker of their evil deeds. And this even extends to Christians who spread false doctrine unknowingly like so-called Christian Zionism, which is an oxymoron. Talmudic Judaism teaches people that Jesus wasn't the Messiah and to worship a different Messiah, which is Satan, the false Messiah, the false Christ, the Antichrist, which means instead of Christ, who will appear in Jerusalem at the sixth trumpet. Even though the Christians who unknowingly knowingly and in ignorance spread about false doctrine are still part of God's family tree, you don't want to help them make a mistake. Try your best to correct them, show them from the word of God where they're wrong, and if they don't listen to you, then that's their problem. You warn them from the word of God and they didn't listen. There are also many who believe in and spread the rapture deception, which deceives people into worshiping the first supernatural entity that appears, claiming to be the Messiah, which is Satan at the sixth trumpet. He will perform miracles. He's supernatural. The whole world will whore after him except for God's elect. The true Christ doesn't return until the seventh trumpet. So if a Christian is spreading false doctrine, even though they're a Christian supposedly, are they abiding in the doctrine of Christ or are they assisting Antichrist in spiritually killing Christians whenever he appears in Jerusalem? There's nothing in the doctrine of Christ which you can find written throughout the word of God. It is the word of God because Christ Jesus is the living word. So if they're teaching something contrary to the word of God, that goes against the doctrine of Christ and therefore don't wish them Godspeed either. Thou shalt not raise a false report as it's written in Exodus chapter 23, put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. 
Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. This means don't follow the crowd when their cause is against God's word. And when's the last time a multitude of people were right in what they were doing? Seek out the scriptures and you'll find it was always the minority. Look at the book of Jeremiah, for example. Look at the book of Daniel. There were only three that refused to bow down and worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up, Nebuchadnezzar being a type of antichrist. So don't think you have to support one team or the other. This isn't a football game. You're supposed to be on God's side, and the kingdom of God is not of this world. The nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance, as it's written in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. This also translates over to the hidden dynasty of politics worldwide with the left-right paradigm, which is the Hegelian dialectic. That's when you have a thesis and an antithesis the left and the right, and eventually they will combine together into a synthesis, and that happens at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. The Kenites have agents set in place for every color of the political rainbow, and the purpose of this is to capture people into one side or the other. They're pied pipers that are skilled in earning your trust, when the whole time they're leading you into the one world political system, the new world order that will emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet whenever Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. The lion written of in Daniel chapter 7 is the right, the Christian nations, and the bear is the left, the communistic non-Christian nations. And there you have the end game of the Hegelian dialectic, the thesis and the antithesis. And when the two sides merge into one in a one world religious system, that third, which are the Christians of the world, die spiritually at the sixth trumpet when Satan appears as Antichrist. That's why it's written in Daniel chapter 7 that the three ribs were in the mouth of the bear between the teeth of it, the ribs being symbolic of the three Christian nations. The little horn, which is Satan's role of Antichrist, coming from Daniel's fourth beast, which is the supernatural, and three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. That's the three Christian nations as well. Ephraim, Judah, and Manasseh. That's telling you what happens to them politically as far as them being between the teeth of the bear and religiously by being plucked up by the roots, deceived into worshiping the false Christ, because Christ is the vine and we are the branches. If they're plucked up by the roots, then they're no longer Christian nations. When a Christian begins to worship the devil, they're no longer a Christian, they're a devil worshiper, and the same goes on a national level. So at the sixth trumpet, when Satan appears as the false Christ and his one world religious system comes into being, that's when those three Christian nations are plucked up by the roots. That's when they die spiritually, and think about it, only Christians can die spiritually. Everyone else is dead already because Christ is the only way to the Father. The sixth trumpet is also when they are merged together with the left, which is the bear, which is why you see those three Christian nations symbolized by three ribs in the mouth of the bear between the teeth of it. So most Christians die spiritually at the sixth trumpet except for God's elect who fought Satan in the first world age. They'll remain virgins spiritually speaking, as opposed to becoming part of the Whore of Babylon, which is Satan's family tree, the many-membered body of Antichrist, with the Kenites being the natural branches, with most Christians being chopped off of the tree of life at that time because they're deceived into worshiping the devil and grafted onto Satan's family tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but not God's elect. They understand the chronological order of events from our Father's word, and they'll be at that time delivered up to Antichrist, which is Satan, for refusing to worship him, and that's when the Holy Spirit will speak through them in a language clearly understood by whoever hears it, and this brings the 144,000 out of the confusion because the testimony of the elect, the Holy Spirit speaking through them, will be transmitted throughout the world. Many will realize the reality of the situation and come out of Babylon, and Babylon means confusion, repenting, and returning to the true Christ, being grafted back onto the tree of life, and taking part in the first resurrection at the end end of the hour of temptation, which was seven years, but has been shortened to a five-month period. The one world political system emerges at the woe of the fifth trumpet whenever Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth. 
Then that one world political system is wounded to death, and then Satan appears as the false Christ in Jerusalem, the desolator, as he's called in the book of Daniel. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the true Christ returns, and he gathers his elect from the uttermost part of heaven to the uttermost parts of the earth. Those of the election that had died beforehand will come back with Christ, while those who were alive and remain during the hour of temptation, being changed into spiritual bodies at that time, and all will be changed into spiritual bodies, but it's the elect that are gathered to Jerusalem to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years, as it's written in Revelation chapter 20. This is the first resurrection. Then Christ goes on to say in Matthew 24, now learn a parable of the fig tree. So the generation of the fig tree began in 1948 and ends whenever the true Christ returns and the good figs are gathered to that land to the millennial temple. So there are two sides and only two sides. You're either on the side of Christ or you're on the side of Antichrist. Do you know the difference? <laughs>